my name is uh, Meena. <clears throat> I'm a senior partner solutions architect with AWS and UiPath is one of my prominent partners I work with. Uh, we uh, in AWS and UiPath have been partnering for uh, for a few years now, and we have actually come up and developed a whole lot of solutions that can accelerate your automation journey um, into uh, using UiPath and AWS. Right. So what I want to cover today, I know this has been a long session for you, so I want to pick four uh, topics today and uh, address some of the things that can basically help uh, your thought process on AWS and uh, UiPath um, implementations. <clears throat> so the first one uh, is auto scaling your RPA infrastructure. So this basically talks about how easily you can deploy an RPA UiPath RPA solution on AWS. Um, I'll I'll talk about a, a few fla flavors. I'm I'm sure you know Param and the rest of the folks from UiPath would have given you a flavor of different deployment capabilities of UiPath based on customer requirements and whatnot, and uh, how UiPath and AWS are partnering in each of those different deployment uh, requirements and how we deploy it seamlessly uh, on AWS. So that's topic number one. <clears throat> topic number two is um, how do you enhance your automation using AWS AI services? Now you, you've seen UiPath RPA uh, doing quite a bit of, you know, uh, automation capabilities within um, um, within multiple uh, uh, sectors. Now using AWS AI services, how do we combine this and provide and infuse intelligence into your RPA uh, capabilities? So that's the second topic. <clears throat> the third topic is extremely um, niche. So we uh, at AWS and UiPath are working closely to build intelligent automation solutions so meaning you really don't have to deploy anything you as an in infrastructure you really don't have to uh, manage your robots or whatnot these are basically pre-packaged solutions that can be deployable for specific industry use cases and whatnot so we are at the beginning of the journey now uh, we have developed a couple of solutions and we are continuously in discussion for more such solutions based on customer demands and requirements Finally, um, the, the, there is other activities happening with UI, UiPath on how can we make it efficient to manage your AWS infrastructure using UiPath. So those are the four different topics that I want to cover today. <clears throat> so the first topic, which is the deployment on uh, deployment, deploying UiPath and AWS. So um, I'm sure you would have heard uh, about multiple deployment uh, patterns of um, UiPath. Uh, so the first one that I want to talk about um, is quick starts. <clears throat> so uh, quick starts are AWS's deployment accelerators. So it, uh, if you heard about cloud formation templates within um, AWS, these are, um, I mean, you can compare it to your Terraform scripts or whatnot, right? So if, if you think about cloud formation uh, templates, th these are cloud formation templates, cold plated, uh, configurable, and can be can can help you deploy UiPath solutions in 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 a span of three to four hours on your um, on your um, uh, AWS infrastructure. So let me quickly show you how a quick start looks like. Uh, this is not a demo. This is basically the level of information that is available within the quick start to make you understand how the whole deployment works and how easy is it to deploy UiPath and AWS. So this is this is one reference for quick uh, quick starts. So if you look at um, the quick start in itself, um, I want you to look at the left hand side of the screen. So where this quick start basically helps you understand what is the level of AWS cost because of uh, deploying a UiPath and AWS. What kind of licenses are required? How does the architecture basically look like within AWS when you deploy UiPath? <clears throat> And what are the other deployment steps that you need to think about and the configurations that you need to set, right? So obviously you are not logging. You Once you logged into AWS, you go into Quick Start and you basically kickstart this uh, Quick Start. And this will help you deploy UiPath on AWS in approximately two, two hours, right? So then you can basically auto scale 
based on the number of robots that you want to run and whatnot. Right? So this is one way of we deploying UiPath and AWS. <clears throat> the, the second one is the automation suite. This automation suite, I'm sure you would have heard that this is basically uh, entire suite of UiPath application um, so it's, uh, built on top of Kubernetes engines. Right. So this automation suite is again a capability that uh, UiPath offers for customers, for large scale customers. <clears throat> now this uh, UiPath and AWS has um, worked in building again quick starts for automation suites to get it deployed on uh, your AWS account. <clears throat> the third but not the least uh, um, is the Elastic Robot Orchestrator. Imagine in a scenario where you really do not want to manage your orchestrator and the rest of your server components of UiPath, but you want to rely heavily on your automation cloud. And also you really don't want to manage updates to your robots and everything. Then there is this concept of Elastic Robot Orchestrator that we have worked uh, with UiPath on. So this is basically you create a tenant within your automation cloud and you from your automation cloud you can spin off robots at scale into your aws accounts so these um, these robots can be um, scaled um, in a basically uh, the the <clears throat> all you need to provide is your is your machine image of your aws into your automation cloud and automation cloud can connect to your aws account and start building your robots at pace so, um, so these are three different capabilities based on customer uh, demands that we have built with UiPath. So the next topic, um, as we discussed, is how do you infuse uh, intelligence into RPA? So before we get into the integration capabilities between your RPA, uh, UiPath RPA and uh, AWS AI services, I want to give you a very high level view of how AWS ML stack looks like. Right. The, there are three layers within the AWS ML stack. The, the, the topmost layer is what AWS calls as AI, AI services. These are, think about it as these are pre-trained models that are available for developers to use it directly on their applications. To use AI services, you absolutely don't need any kind of machine learning background or capability. All you need to know is how do you uh, is there a, how do you know to call an API, and you can then start using these AI services. The AI services range from vision to speech to text uh, to healthcare and industrial and whatnot. <clears throat> Let me quickly show you a couple of AI services to give you a feel of how these AI services are within AWS. Now I'm on my, I'm now logging into my AWS account. I am in my management console within AWS account. When I click on services, you can, when I go to machine learning, you see a bunch of these services that are listed here. These, list, these services are machine learning and AI services from AWS. Again, these uh, some, a lot of these services are pre-built models, pre-trained models. I'll pick a few of those pre-trained models to show you how they work. Say, for example, I want to work with text-based data. Right? I get a text and I want to so some document or something which I want to understand some sort of a key phrases, entities, the sentiment of the text, and whatnot. Right. So there is this service called as Amazon Comprehend. I'm just going into Amazon Comprehend as a service. I'm going to give uh, show you how Comprehend works. <clears throat> so in Comprehend, this is the text that Comprehend um, is going to process. So I can I can write in anything in here. So for example, I mean, let me show you how this works first, and then I can I'll change the text and show you how it works. So the input text basically talks about you know some credit card numbers and minimum payment and whatnot. Quite a bit of information. Uh, as you can see, there are entities, there are PII data, there is dates. There is a whole lot of stuff that is happening within this particular set of uh, information. 
So when I click on analyze, now Textract takes that information and starts identifying key entities in here. So it's basically going to say John is a person, entity is a person, and there is a confidence score of 99 percentage. Similarly, um, any company is an organization and whatnot. Right? So it, it looks at the entire text and figures out all the different entities within this text. <clears throat> Similarly, I can basically go in and identify key phrases as well, right? So this is uh, this is a key phrase, <clears throat> and it also provides you a confidence score around it. We looked at certain set of credit card information and whatnot. So these are all PIA data. So Comprehend can also help you identify this PIA data. So look at, uh, as you can see that it, it has identified uh, this as a credit card number and it, and it's a PIA data and with a confidence score of 99 percentage. Similarly, sentiment analysis and whatnot. So now you, at a very high level, you can understand that I have not done anything with respect to building a model, training a model, or uh, deploying a model or anything like that. I have basically used an AI service which is available for me out of the box, pre-built, pre-trained, available for me to out of the box to process any kind of textual information. I want to give uh, a flavor around one or two more of the services to give, give to get a better understanding. Recognition is another service. This is basically for recognizing images and videos. Let me and there are multiple capabilities within recognition. So the, I mean there is label detections to facial analysis to celebrity recognitions. Let me, let me pick celebrity recognition. Any picture that has any kind of celebrity in there, it is going to identify the celebrity right away. So this basically says the this is the picture of Jeff Bezos with a confidence score of 99 percentage. Let me upload another text. Let's say I'm uploading Denzel Washington. So I uploaded Denzel Washington. Right away, it basically figured out this is Denzel Washington with a, with a confidence score of 98 percentage and whatnot. So this is one, one such feature. Similarly, label detection is another one. So this is all within recognition. So any picture, it kind of does object segmentation um, to kind of understand and provide you with what are the different objects within this picture. So this, so this particular picture has more than one object. And as I, <clears throat> as I toggle around, I can, I can see that there is a skateboard. There's a person on the skateboard there are cars, different kinds of cars, there are buildings. So all of these objects have been identified. Again, for this AI service, I haven't done anything in terms of just using the service and I've not done any kind of machine learning models and what. So this kind of should provide you at a very high level of how an AI services work, right? So as a developer, all I have to call is the AI service with your text or you know, in, in the case of Comprehend, in the, take, in, the, in the case of recognition, I'm just going to send it a picture and it is going to analyze everything and give me the result back. And the results are usually in JSON format. So this is where AA services, uh, uh, this is where the AA services are, right? The second layer is Amazon SageMaker. <laughs> this is for uh, data scientists who are willing to build their own model end to end. So Amazon SageMaker is an end-to-end -end platform for you to prepare your data for building the model, feature engineer the data, build the model, train the model, tune the model, as well as deploy the model. So the end-to-end -end life cycle of machine learning can be done using Amazon SageMaker here. Right. The, the third um, uh, uh, layer on the stack is the ML frameworks and infrastructure. Here, it uh, this is for you know, uh, pra expert pra practitioners in machine learning who wants to use their own set of ML libraries like TensorFlow, PyTorch, and whatnot. So this gives you at a very high level how the AWS ML stack is. So now, now what have we done with UiPath? <clears throat> so there are two things that we have done with UiPath. So number one is we have we have pre-built integrations with key AA services that we, uh, some of them I showed right now. So, so some of them are, you know, text tracks, the recognitions, comprehends and translate and whatnot. All of these AWS services are available for you to be 
um, added as a plugin into your studio and you can directly use it within your uh, within your workflow when you build your ua path workflow the second thing that we have done is we have created something called as amazon scope so this kind of provides you a conduit to connect to the entire suite of AWS services, not just to AA services, but to include Lambdas and the rest of AWS services that are out there, right? So this gives you a conduit to call any kind of AWS services behind the scenes. So by using RPA capabilities of UiPath and AWS AA services capability, now you can start to build and infuse intelligence into your robots. Not only can the robots just do stuff, now they can basically analyze, decide, and think as well. Some of the key use cases that you might have seen today, either from Tony or from the previous presentation is you know, the intelligent document processing, which kind of uses a um, uh, text tract and UI path. Similarly, there are, uh, you know, uh, back to what Ron was mentioning around healthcare, electronic medical records, um, using text tract and comprehend. There are a bunch of these use cases that we have been able to help customers progress by infusing intelligence into RPA, uh, UiPath RPA capabilities. The, the, the third capability that I was talking to you about was the intelligent automation solutions. So one of the, I've just taken one of those examples of intelligent automation solution here. So, con so this is for reducing the uh, call volumes and also improving the efficiency of handling calls in a contact center. <clears throat> AWS uh, has a service called as Amazon Connect. Amazon Connect is an omni-channel cloud contact center capability. <laughs> right, so it helps you uh, set up a cloud um, uh, contact center in a matter of minutes. Now the cloud contact center can now face off with the customers in receiving calls, IVRs, chatbots, and whatnot, and are able to, um, you know, uh, work with the customer on certain set of requests. But the moment when the requests are demanding some sort of a backend activity to connect to some systems to pull data from or connect to some systems to update data and whatnot, now we have integrated that kind of capability with UiPath uh, robots. Now, by connecting AWS's Amazon Connect with UiPath robots behind the scenes, the UiPath robots now work as a digital worker or um, an agent that potentially reduces quite a bit of capability, quite a bit of uh, activities that the actual uh, call agent needs to do. Right. Some examples here include, you know, handling inbound calls for customer requests like password changes and whatnot. Right. So that is uh, that is very prevalent in in such use cases. And we have had um, uh, we have heard customer stories where we've been able to provide productivity improvement of close to 40 to 50 percent on getting AWS uh, uh, Amazon Connect with UiPath robots integrated into such solutions. The last but not the least is um, IT automation on AWS. I mean, AWS has a bunch of services. We are running around 220 plus services currently. And a lot of these services sometimes needs uh, a decent amount of, um, you know, monitoring and, you know, provisioning and whatnot. <clears throat> UiPath and AWS have been working on, again, some sort of a, uh, out of the box capability, which is which we call it as IT automation on AWS. From UiPath, now you can basically provision EC2 instances, provision S3 buckets, AWS workspaces, and whatnot. So this is just the beginning of the journey, and we are working more with the IT automation suite to kind of extend our capabilities on deploying and accelerating some of your management of AWS infrastructure as well. So. In short, um, you know, uh, this partnership uh, is, is, uh, has been going great. They are an advanced technology partner with us. Uh, we've been working with them for the past uh, two plus years, and we are just at the beginning of the journey, and you can see the number of automations and integrations that have already been established. And we are just scratching the surface, and there is much more to come as we partner uh, in, in, in other, other initiatives.